Friday. It's mornings with Lou, Ann, and Tim. According to Mike. Mike? Because he just said, okay, and t to Tim and Lou, Ann, and Ten. Now oh, I in the booth he calls you Lou, Ann? I feel like, I'll take that as a compliment, though. This I is not Lou, Ann. No. This is Alex Parr. How are you, Alex? I'm well. How are you? I can't I'm believe I woke up with this much energy to get to work for 6 a.m. today, but I did it. Anything's possible. Luann does it every day. She gets up at 4.45 every day. Yeah, but once you're in the routine of it, I'm sure it's a little bit easier. For right. me, I just had to get up, energy, and by that I mean caffeine. Caffeine's great today. It's workaholic day, Alex. That's why I'm here. I'm putting on that <laughs> grind. I'm doing it for you. Luann clearly is not a workaholic. Luann is off today and Monday. She's gone away for an extended little family retreat. Mm. Well, I hope you guys don't get sick of me because I'll be back here Monday as well. I might show up. Um, did you? Might? Just kidding. Okay. Just kidding. Did you happen to watch anything to do with the Fourth of July yesterday? Did you catch any of the coverage at all? Only on TV's coverage on our Instagram page. Ooh, that was really smooth. Thank you. I was. I Twitter is my best friend. Yes, it so is. I am. The fireworks, of course, last night across the river, amazing, gorgeous. I sat. I could see them right from my backyard. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Yeah, right between the trees, there was a spot. Where they, and that's exactly where they so went So did up. you get to see the Canadians ones from your house as well? I was in bed for the Canadian oh, ones. Oh, okay. Because I want to hear a, a, a fair comparison. You always hear the U.S. ones are better, but I want somebody this year. Because I heard this year's Canadian ones were pretty good. It's, it's, I think it's not about necessarily even the quality. The quantity. It's the quantity and uh, the length of the display. Yes, that is fair. Last night's fireworks across the river went on forever. I mean, it was really... How was the grand finale? How was the... Low. Oh. Interesting, because you would have thought that the big, you know, would be the right. final ones. They did instead. They went big, and then at the very end, super intense, all low. Oh, but, a bunch of smaller ones. Just yeah, but you know what? The flashes were incredible. And, I, like, so bright from where I was sitting, which is, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where am I? Bottom of North Street Hill. So quite a distance from the fireworks. Okay. But the flashes, I thought, if you were down there on the waterfront, it would be blinding. It would be pretty cool. So anyway, my dogs were not impressed. They, they, it no, was, they, really, they it was a lot of banging at the end there. Yeah. But no, anyway, um, so the fireworks were great. I enjoyed yes. watching them. As I said, I can't compare, but they were very long. Okay. Which was, I like that. I like, I like a lot. See, I feel like I would like a little bit shorter, but a little bit more plentiful, I think. I don't want to be outside too long, bugs. That kind of the stuff. bugs were bad last night. Mosquitoes were bad See, last night. See, that's why I wouldn't want it to be too long. A little bit more condensed, a little bit more plentiful. Okay, I, I disagree. Think I'd be okay with that. Uh, and then, and then. Well, I'm right. So then I watched some of the coverage of the Fourth of July in Washington D.C. Ah, uh, yes, well, the story you came well, into the well, office telling me well, today. Oh well. Crackling up. Crackling Donald up. Trump has rewritten history once again. At a boy, Trump. According you did to it. Donald Trump, there were airports in 1776. So he, it's, he was, first of all, did he, they built him, because it was raining, and you know, he can't get his hair wet because it will expose his stuff. They built him like what, what some people are calling a, a, a plexiglass hamster cage. So he was encased in plexiglass to stay dry. <laughs> okay. okay. It was like the Pope, Pope mobile, only it was stationary. Um, and I, I think the water on the plexiglass caused an issue with his teleprompter, because he was so obviously reading the speech. Yeah. Because the speech involved, of course, American history, of which Donald Trump knows nothing. So he's standing there, and you can see him reading the teleprompter, and he gets stuck on the ramparts. The rampart, because you know why? Because I don't think he knows what a rampart is. No. He made the smoothest of all For those recoveries. Of you do want to know a rampart is a, is a barrier. It's, it's a protective barrier. It's like a wall, right? Okay, so he gets stuck on the word ramparts, and first of all, he says, Our army man, the amp ports or something like that and ports it was a hard word then he tries to fix it and says it rammed the ramparts mm -hmm. and then he just decides to ad lib it and says it took over the airports now if michael has the clip you can hear him say it himself he took over the airports and did whatever they had to do do you, you want to michael do you have that yeah right he does go? he All does right, have here, the clip here we go so right here's now. donald trump fourth of july address to the world talking about airports Washington. in 1776 Commander-in-Chief, the Continental Army suffered a bitter winter of Valley Forge, found glory across the waters of the Delaware, and seized victory from Cornwallis of Yorktown. Our Army manned the airports. It ran the ramparts. It took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. And at Fort McHenry, under the rocket's red glare, 
It had it nothing took over the airports and anything it had to do. American children, American children are watching this going, oh. I want to be the that president wasn't in, when I That grow wasn't up. in our history books. I don't remember the airports in 70. Twitter's gone crazy. Yeah. Anyway, happy 4th of July to our friends across the river. You had a beautiful, it was not, and pouring rain, oh my gosh. All of his trunks got, all of his tanks got rusty. <laughs> it's rusted tank, but beautiful weather for the Upper Peninsula, and I hope that our friends across the river had a fabulous 4th of July. Um, it is also, what else today? Today is International Bikini Day. I remember this oh, from perfect. last year. Oh, yes, perfect. I, I, I came out. prepared. The bikini is 73 years old today, um, although it's been documented in, as far as 1,700 years ago, Alex. It's in a mosaic. Oh, when the airport was invented. <laughs> A Roman mosaic called the Chamber of Ten Maidens shows bikini-wearing women partaking in sports and athletic activities. So after today, I say we put on our bikinis and we go work out together. Uh, our bikinis. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Listen, we got a great show for you. It's ADSB all morning long. We, I had a great interview with some of uh, student student senators from Shaplow. <laughs> they did a really cool. It's, I know school is out for summer. School, but anyway, we're going to show you this interview with the kids from <laughs> Shaplow. They did a great initiative welcoming other schools to see them up in Shaplow, and then all those pianos downtown, Alex. Yes. Painted by Algoma District School Board students. We're going to do a feature on that what as well. What a great initiative. Plus, what are you going to do this morning? The news. So there you go. Don't go anywhere. It's Alex and Tim on a Friday morning in Sault Ste. Marie on TV. Morning to Luann and Tim. We'll be right back after this. With over 45 years of experience, All Ontario Well Drilling offers hydrofracking and all well drilling services. Call 705-575-8088 or 705-257-9495. At Maitland Ford Lincoln, we see our trucks everywhere. We see them on Queen Street, Lake Street, North Street, Bay Street, Second Line, Third Line, Fourth Line, Pine Street, Great Northern People's Road, Wellington, Cora Road, Bruce Street, Carmen's Way, Northern Avenue. Trunk Road. Folks come from all over Algoma District and beyond to buy their truck at Maitland Ford Lincoln. Amazing prices, outstanding service. King Street, Shannon Road, Goodley Bay, Black Road, Government Road, and even on Pine Shores. Yep, our trucks are everywhere. Get yours at Maitland Ford Lincoln. Built for Northern Life on Great Northern Road, just north of the hospital. With three brands to choose from, from Kawasaki, Suzuki, and CF Moto, visit one of our four showrooms today and speak with our knowledgeable, friendly, and enthusiastic staff who will be happy to help you with all of your motorsports needs. Enjoy life, enjoy the ride, the Robinson Motorsports. If you have been in and around Sault Ste. Marie lately, you may have seen one of these pianos. I think there's five in the community right now. There's a sixth one being repaired, I believe. Um, it's an initiative that was started by Future Sault Ste. Marie in cooperation and partnership with the Algoma District School Board. And joining me now from the school board is Sarah Constable. Sarah, your title, Experiential Learning, tell me about your title there. So my title is the uh, Experiential Learning Lead and more specifically Community Connected Experiential Learning Lead. Uh, so it's a, a program initiated and spearheaded by the ministry and then supported by our school board. Uh, essentially what I do is I provide uh, that link uh, and communication between community partners uh, and our programs within all of our schools K to 12. 
so that if anyone wants to engage youth and our students in a project like the piano project, then they can contact me. And experiential is exactly what it says. You're there learning by actually hands-on experience. And with this piano project, there were different levels of experience and um, hands-on involvement. Talk a little bit about how the students, variety of students of ages, got involved with this? Yes, so we had uh, been contacted by future Sault Ste. Marie. So the planning behind, uh, don't realize the story, but there is a big story to get a piano um, uh, with such a beautiful uh, decoration. So it started with our construction uh, classes at White oh. Pines. Oh, so they uh, there you go, the hands on with construction. Hand on, yes. Yeah, so they were uh, tasked with sanding and priming all of the pianos to be prepared for the application uh, oh. and the design. So with that, we had grade nine classes at White Pines who were uh, designing a program, or a, sorry, yes, the teachers designed the program in class program program uh, with the students and they designed each of the pianos uh, and then invited elementary school students uh, from oh. Grandview, Eastview, Pinewood and uh, Anna McRae. So with the design and mentorship of the grade 9 students, the, these elementary school students were participating in a day at White Pines, an arts and cultural day, yeah. where they not only engaged in these visual arts uh, by designing and painting the piano, but then also in the musical arts. This was really youth engagement too, wasn't it? Because the kids were really responsible for a lot of aspects of this program. The kids loved this program. In fact, um, the day of the delivery of the uh, piano, to get them on uh, our streets in yes. Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, the students were down there still painting and trying to get their last bits of paint <laughs> just to get the per perfect uh, design so that people could appreciate them. Did they there. do it as sort of a contest thing on the designs or how did that work? Well, we only had uh, the six pianos. Okay. So with two grade nine classes running, uh, it wasn't enough to have all of the students uh, have a specific piano, okay. but uh, with so they more- they had to work together. They did. They had groups working on each of the pianos, uh, anywhere from two to four students designing it. Amazing. And then of course you had uh, close to 80 elementary schools throughout the process. Whoa! We're actually going to go to a couple of other locations and meet some of those students that actually worked on these Hi. pianos. And they are fantastic. They were so dedicated and so inspired by this. And I think they're just so proud to see them in our streets. And people always comment on them to me, it's, saying we see people playing them all the time. And uh, it's really been a great it's, experience it's a for them. It's a great idea. And the future Sault Ste. Marie had the concept. And now they apparently according to what you told me before they had a lot of people offering pianos up so if these get weathered after a year we know we can continue this program right yes and the intention pianos. is we know that a piano outside won't last forever right. uh, so whether it's through more students in the Algoma District School Board or local artists who may want to mm -hmm. uh, engage in a performance fantastic in a project in a project like this Sarah thanks for coming All down right, here too bad to get out of the office on a day like this right I know the sun is shining oh, it's a great day uh, school's almost out. You're going to have a great summer? I hope so, yes. I hope so, too. Hey, thanks for joining me again. Okay, and we're going to meet some more of the kids around town at some of the other pianos. on location right now outside the public library at one of these amazing painted pianos and I am joined by the artists who painted this very piano. On my left I have Ashton. Hello Ashton. Hi. How are you today? I'm good. Where do you go to school and what grade are you in? I go to White Pines and I'm in grade 9. Thank you very much Ashton. Hello Elise for the YC. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining us on Mornings with Luann and Tim. I love your piano. Are you uh, also a student at White Pines? Yes I am. In the same grade 9 art class? Yep. With your best friend? Yes. And is that how you chose each other to work on this project? Yep. Okay <laughs> tell me how this all started. One day, one day you're in art class and your teacher his name is? Mr. Zago. Hello, Rob Zago. He comes into class and he says what? Um, that we have pianos around the zoo and we need to paint them. And you said to yourselves... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was a pretty cool idea or did you think it was kind of wacky? 
I thought it was a really cool idea, and okay. I wanted to be a part of it. And you wanted... Yay! Okay, so, what did you have to do then? You had to submit a design? How did that work? Yeah, we got a piece of paper with a piano on it, and he says, um, design this, and then we'll hand them in and pick the best ones. Okay, so then you lost the piece of paper with the piano. <laughs> well, someone took it out of your piano. Yeah. And then you had to start again? Kind of. We kind of, like, knew what we were doing, so... Okay, so how did you draw it out, first of all, on the on the paper for Mr. to hand in to Mr. Uh, Zargo? We, like, just like we had pencil crayons, we did some colors, and then we added cool zentangles on it. You Zentangles? Is that what the name of these design things are? Like all these little... T like Describe a zentangle to me. Yeah, it's just like a whole bunch of different like patterns and different designs. Just like doodles that you put together. I love it. Um, you got some flowers and some re little geometrical shapes and very zen-y kind of stuff looking too. I love it. What about the colors? Where did you said pencil crayons? Whose idea was that? Um, it was Elise's idea for the colors and my idea for the designs. Well, together you, you made a great team. Uh, so then you had to hand this piece of paper with the piano design in and it, somebody judged it? Yeah, I think so. I think there was a group of people and they picked out of all the different options which ones that they wanted to do. Very cool. So now, okay, you got your design, you do it, it's selected. The next thing you have to do is actually get the paints and, and, and you chalked it first, is that right? Yeah, we did chalk and then once we were happy with it, we went over and paint. Very smart. With the chalk, you could then make easy adjustments to whatever the, to the pattern, right? Yeah. Now, you also told me that you you actually were involved in a couple of the piano designs because the paint colors weren't in for you yet. So you worked on another piano. Which one was that? Yeah, there's a brick one that's somewhere else downtown that we worked on before we had the paints to do this. Where's the brick one? Do you know? I think it's on Gore Street. Oh, cool! I, I live around there. I'll check it out. Wow. Let's let's go play your piano, shall we? I know none of us really play, but let's give it a try. Let's do chopsticks or something. Wait, I'll get in the middle. All right, here we go. Are you ready? On your mark? Get set? Play! <laughs> okay, that was really awful. Yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. Yeah. Thank, you know what? And whenever you play a piano, when people gather around, they all end up smiling. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yep. You guys brought joy to the faces of Sault Ste. Marieites. <laughs> and we're going to go meet Braxton after this, outside of Case's Music on Queen Street, and I understand he's very talented as well. So now we're on Queen Street outside Cases Music with your piece of work here, Braxton. Nice to meet you. What's your full name? Braxton Blake. Braxton Blake, grade? Nine. At? White Pines. Right. Same as the other ladies that we met earlier. Yes. And so this is part of the experiential learning, so this is hands-on, and it's also community engagement, right? Yeah. What did you think when you heard the idea of painting pianos and put them in def different downtown locations? When can I start? <laughs> <laughs> that, was your, that was your feeling, hey? Yeah. So. Art to you, as you sort of came to it around grade seven, you discovered that you had a talent. Is that, is that true? Around that time. Yeah. And how did you develop your talents then? Uh, kind of just drawing in class instead of doing my work. <laughs> and that got some attention from some teachers. Yeah. Who actually praised you for your work, yes? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Zago, he saw some of my work and he said, we need to put you in a higher grade class. In a higher grade class. And you like it so much, actually, that you're continu considering continuing your art education to post-secondary? Yeah. Tell them what the dream is. Uh, just study art and move to Paris, see what happens. Study art and move to Paris, that's a, that's a great dream. And you know what, from the talent that I see here, it's totally possible. What inspired you for your piano, Braxton? I wanted to get something that would catch the eye of just any people that were just walking on the street, something very colorful, something very cartoony, and just, I see that and I've heard that it's really has done that. It's done that. Well, it definitely it, it caught my eye, the cartoony element of it. We got a puffer fish here that's yeah. hysterically funny. You got a character here who, who is uh, wearing a greyhound headband. So I like that you got some local culture in there. Uh, so, and it's a little bit, almost a little graffiti-ish in some spots too, eh? That's what a lot of people are saying. It's a very graffiti-ish kind of cartoon style. Kind yeah. Of, yeah. It reminds me a little of The Simpsons also. Where, are you a fan of Matt? Is it Matt Groening? Is that how you say his name? I think it's Matt Groening, and yes. Groening, yeah. I, I like to, I have watched a lot of cartoons as a kid, and it kind of just led to my cartoon style now. Now, part of this program too, experiential learning and the hands-on, you're also mentoring younger artists as well. Is that true? Well, yeah, we did have a, a few younger kids help me paint this piano. So they came from different elementary schools that are the feeder schools for White Pines. And what kind of work did they do with you? you did you have to oversee them? Uh, no, not exactly. I kind of just helped them out. I made them uh, paint the certain areas with certain colors, and I just I see that it turned out very well. Yeah, so you gave them some guidance, and they followed through. Yeah. So this sort of, uh, what would you say was the thing that 
you enjoyed most about this experience? I feel like just the entire experience. I loved designing it. I loved painting it. I loved helping the kids uh, paint it as well. And seeing the end result here, I. I'm very happy with it. Well, congratulations, and you got to really, this is a great spot for your piano, Cases Music. You're going to have some real musicians playing this one. Oh, yeah. Could you do me a favor and swing around and just play a few chords or something? I heard you playing a little bit of, uh, I think you were playing some Queen earlier when I first arrived, were you not? I believe so. Go ahead, give it a whirl. This is the man himself who painted the piano, now playing the piano, Braxton Blake. my friend thank you and congratulations pick a piano play it and thank the kids from Sault Ste. Marie Algoma District School Board for supplying Sault Ste. Marie with this great initiative and future Sault Ste. Marie good work we'll be back with more mornings with Lou Ann and Tim right after this Recently, the Government of Ontario established a $100 million affordability fund to help Ontarians who don't qualify for low-income conservation programs ease the burden of their electricity bill. Whether you rent or own your home, as long as you pay your electric bill, you could qualify. There are three levels of support available. The first is a home energy kit with upgrades like smart power bars and LED light bulbs. The second includes Energy Star appliances that help keep things cool during the hot summer months. The third is for electrically heated homes so that your power bills don't break the bank during those long Canadian winters. Plus, all upgrades including installation are completely free of charge. Visit affordabilityfund.org or call 1-855-494-FUND to find out if you qualify. And welcome back to The Morning Show with Tim and Luann, but less Luann and a little bit more Alex. But before we get into this banter, we have to thank our friends over at KC Security for once again sponsoring another edition of The Morning Show. If you want to be safe, you've got... Who else are you going to call? You're going to call the guys at KC Security. But Tim, what are we going to be talking about now? KC Security. They protecting you and me, KC they Security. They protecting you. Might not want to use that as their slogan, but <laughs> KC Security. They protecting you and me. <laughs> Listen, I'm like Trump. My grammar is not the best. Hey, at least you made it through a little bit more smooth. I did. Okay, but what's going on? People... What's going on? Um, Disney has announced the actress named Halle Bailey. Not Halle Berry, because <laughs> Halle Berry is like 52. Halle Bailey is 19 years old. She's a singer-actress, and she has been cast as Disney's Ariel in the live-action The Little Mermaid that's just been announced. Mm -hmm. All the racists are coming out of the woodwork. Ariel's a red-headed white girl. It doesn't take you, much to get them out of the you woodwork. Can't, you can't cast a person of color as Ariel. She's the wrong color. Hey, um, I got a news flash for you. Ariel's a pretend character. She's a mermaid. They don't exist. They can be whatever color you want. 
For heaven's sakes, people! Like I was saying before we came on too, if it was like a Mulan, that's somebody that you have to be. Yeah. That the ethnic ethnicity of it has to be correct because it's very important to the character. Yeah. Ariel's a fish. Except. Mm, yeah, Ariel's a fish. So. Fish come in all kinds of colors. All kinds. Anyway, so people just it's, people on like it's it's people. One this one girl goes crazy on Twitter, you know. Oh, and she says she's gonna burn her DVD now of, that she has of the Little Mermaid. Oh no! I yeah. bet Disney's crying and using the she money already, she used to wipe their tears. She oh, already no. bought it. Um. So then. People start, they go crazy. There's a, you're a racist. And she says, I am not a racist. It just so happens my best friend is half black. <laughs> <laughs> that must mean they're not ding, racist. Ding, 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 um. That That is what, like, my uncle knows a guy and his cousin <laughs> is black. So how That's can like, I be racist? That was like, who was it? That, that, that was an American politician saying, oh, no, you know. Uh, no, it was, wasn't it? I don't know. I but think I'm it was go Doug with... Ford. Wasn't it Doug Ford who was the one who said, Listen, my accountants and my lawyers are Jewish. I know Jewish people. Yeah, anyway. Ed Sheeran, we listened to the track. That is... Ed Sheeran has a new album coming out, Number Six Collaborations mm -hmm. Project. Yeah. Okay, so he's got some great people he's performing with, but this track we listened to was Bruno Mars and... Chris Stapleton. Chris Stapleton, I guess, is a country singer, yep. I blues... What, I Born don't in know. the early 70s, I believe. So late I, late anyway, 70s. Yeah. 78, I think Good old boy from Kentucky or something. Anyway... He's a, this song is called Blow. And it is nothing like, if you know Ed Sheeran, this is so far different from what he's used to doing. It's a great song. It really is. It's way more rock than I've ever heard. Way more Ed rock, Sheeran, edgy. Or even Bruno Mars. Even Bruno Mars. I like it. Mm -hmm. Although, it's kind of, well, in one, Suggestive? Of the, in one of the opening lyrics, he says, um, um, you make me want to make a baby. I'm too you, young to you hear this. You make me want to make nope. a baby. And then he says he's cocked and armed and you make me want to blow la, 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 um, la, 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 my la, mind la, la, la. or something like that. Anyway. Can we go back to a PG show now? I know. I we can. I so just uh, be... Uh, <laughs> hey, Alex, you have the news coming up? Oh, thank God. We're, we are going back to PG. We yes, I've PG got the news. So stay does. tuned because that's coming up right after this. When you support The Restore, it helps Habitat for Humanity build affordable housing for families. How does this work? New and gently used goods are donated to The Restore. The sale of these goods generate funds for building homes. For every $1 spent at The Restore, there is a $4 return on investment within our community. For example, Habitat homeowners have better educational outlook, increased employment stability, improved health, and reduction in the use of social services. Every donation and every dollar we receive through the Restore helps build sustainable housing for future homeowners. Everyone needs a foundation to build a future. To find out more and how you can help, drop by the Restore at 32 White Oak Drive or go to habitatsu.ca. As a nation, Canada has participated in all of the major world conflicts. In the Sioux area alone, over 10,000 men and women have enlisted in the Canadian Armed Forces. The Veterans Commemorative Monument aims to cement the legacy of the Canadian Armed Forces in stone. It will highlight the bravery, strength, courage and sacrifice of our service men and women. In times of need, they volunteered to serve us. Now it is our time to thank and recognize their sacrifice. You can help honor our men and women of service by donating today. To help construct this special, one-of-a-kind monument, visit thosewhoserve.ca to find out how to donate and more. Since 1899, The Machine Shop has been a unique space for innovation and creativity. Once a leading pulp and paper company, The Machine Shop was built by Francis H. Clerg, which later became part of St. Mary's Paper in 1984. After the closure of St. Mary's Paper in 2011, The Machine Shop spent four years vacant. In 2015, The Machine Shop reopened their doors to the community for the first time. From weddings to galas to concerts and festivals, the one-of-a-kind venue has something for everyone. We are proud to work with the community and local nonprofits to host major events such as Festival of Trees, Pearls and Plaid, an evening at Hogwarts, and more. While you're here, wind down at the Mill Steakhouse and Wine Bar for a quiet dining experience, or watch a game and try a wood fire oven pizza and local draft at the Boiler Room. 
Don't forget to save room for house-made gelato and baked goods at the Gelato Mill. For more information on the Machine Shop events, history and restaurants, visit machineshopinc.ca. Three great places, one historic venue. Starting in July, PUC Services will be donating $5 to the Algoma Family Services Student Nutrition Program for each customer that signs up for e-billing. In addition to supporting healthy development for children, customers that sign up for e-billing will also be entered to win one of nine $200 bill credits to be used towards their PUC bill. The campaign will run for a total of nine weeks with the last draw taking place on August 30th. The student nutrition program supports breakfast, lunch or snack programs in schools to help students achieve optimal health, growth and intellectual development. In Sault Ste. Marie, the student nutrition program has served more than 535,000 meals to approximately 3,500 students during last school year. Student nutrition programs are run by dedicated school staff, parent and community volunteers. When grocery shopping, some people will always aim to grab the product furthest to the back on the shelf and this story will have them continuing to do as such. Texas police are in search of a woman who entered a Walmart and licked the top of an open half gallon of Blue Bell tin roof ice cream. In the Twitter video, which has now amassed upwards of 11 million views, the suspect is clearly seen opening the freezer door, then removing the lid of ice cream to lick it, and then promptly return it to its spot on the shelf. Police say the woman faces a charge of second degree felony tampering with a consumer product which carries 2 to 20 years behind bars and a possible fine of upwards of $10,000. The ice cream maker said it has inspected the freezer case that contained the licked ice cream, found the problematic tub and removed all tin roof half gallons from the Lufkin Walmart. This incident is being investigated as a second degree felony. It's a very serious offense and if you think about all the implications uh, and how uh, it would affect uh, consumer confidence in the products that you buy, uh, you will understand why the legislature has classified it so highly. July 4th celebrations were cut abruptly short for some as California residents were hit with the largest earthquake the state has seen in the last 20 years. The 6.4 magnitude quake struck at 10.33 a.m. Thursday in the Mojave Desert, about 240 kilometers northeast of Los Angeles near the town of Ridgecrest, California. While no deaths have been reported, multiple injuries and two house fires were reported in the town of 28,000 residents. Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency for Kern County. The declaration means the state will help the county and municipalities in it with emergency aid and recovery efforts. The Alberta government is holding a public inquiry into the funding of environmental campaigns it says have prevented the province's resources from getting to new customers. It will have a two and a half million dollar budget and a year long mandate. We want to understand what exactly lies behind this campaign to defame and landlock Canadian energy. That's why I'm pleased to announce today the launch of a formal public inquiry into all facets of the foreign funded and directed attempts to landlock our energy, including but not exclusive to the tar sands campaign. It will investigate all of the national and international connections follow the money trail and expose all of the interests involved. It will find out if any laws have been broken and recommend legal and policy actions where appropriate. Most importantly, it will serve notice that Alberta will no longer allow hostile interest groups to dictate our economic destiny as one of the most ethical major producers of energy in the world. Albertans need to understand the facts and the extent of this foreign funded misinformation campaign. By launching this inquiry, we are fighting back against interests who are trying to landlock Alberta's energy. That is why we're very pleased that Steve Allen, a forensic and restructuring accountant, has agreed to serve as commissioner for this inquiry. He will have one year to conduct the public inquiry, which will consist of two phases. The first phase will focus on fact finding, which may include a paper review, investigation, information gathering, interviews, and additional research. The second phase will be based on the information gathered during phase one and will include any public hearings deemed necessary at that time. Mr. Allen will submit his final report to government by July 2nd, 2020, at which time we'll review it and then share it with the public. The budget for the inquiry is 2.5 million and the government will provide administrative, security, website, and, te and technical support. 
For late night empty stomachs, our neighbors in Sudbury now have a new alternative to ordering food late at night. Pizzaforno.com is a company that has designed pizza vending machines that have been stationed around the city. The pizzas which are handmade prior to entering the machine are never frozen, meaning that if the pizza is not sold within four days, they are replaced. As the machines serve food, Public Health Sudbury and Districts is responsible for keeping them inspected. Public Health Inspector Cynthia peacock Roca says the health unit checks for proper food temperatures and cleanliness. The vending machines have been a hit as one machine was cited as selling 18 pizzas between 12 and 8 a.m. in a single night, with sales being over 100 on a weekly basis. Melly, did you know that the Bush Plain Heritage Center is celebrating 30 years this year? Wow, great for them. Did you know that if you're at the Bush Plain Museum, that you're only 12 minutes and 7 seconds away from Maitland Ford Lincoln? Really? Maitland Ford? It's closer than you think. Back to mornings with Lou Ann and Tim, and joining me live in the studio. Who have I got here? I've got Haley on my left, and I've got Sarah down there. Haley and Sarah are student senators from the Algoma District School Board. They're visiting us all the way from <laughs> Welcome to the Sioux. Uh, you're here for the big gala tonight, yes. is that right? What's the gala? What's that about? So we all get together and we kind of prepare a, like a slideshow of what we've done over the year. Right. So uh, we made a movie, yeah, like featuring all the things that we've done this year. All the different projects yeah. you've undertaken. Sarah, maybe you could fill the audience in a little bit for those who don't know what a student senator does. The role of a student senator in the actual school. So in okay. your school, what do you do? So in my school, we listen to what the students really are wanting for this year and we decide to make positive change within our school. So whether it's making a student lounge or a gym, a we gym. will listen to what they have to say and we take that into account. We meet with our principal and other mentors in our school. Yeah. We apply for student grants, we get all this stuff and we make it happen. <laughs> so you actually apply for the funding and everything? Right. And and there's two examples you gave are things that you actually carried out in your school. Yes. Tell me about the, the lounge first. So the lounge, uh, we had this idea when some students were complaining that there was nowhere to work, like there was no real quiet space or okay. like a fun space in the school. Oh. So, like, the library is closed at lunch because, uh, like, supervisors, like... They have to go for yeah. lunch, too, yes. right? <laughs> but if students wanted to work through lunch or do something else, yeah. rather than sit in a hallway, they can go to... The Learning Commons. Yeah. So, yeah, we put it... I love the name, the Learning Commons. <laughs> yeah, we put it on the stage um, of our calf. So we have, like, chairs in there. We have a laptop bar, which is very So cool. you can take your own laptop and hook it up yeah. and get... Yeah. And do work on your laptop yeah. at the laptop bar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can lounge on some, some comfortable chairs. Yep. Did you see also like foosball and stuff? Yeah, we have yeah. foosball and air hockey. And yeah. air hockey. And yeah. So it's a games area, yeah. a study area, yeah. a chat area. Yeah. Yep. And you managed to get all the funding together. With a grant. With a grant. And yeah. some, we do, we host different fundraisers throughout sure. the year too. The student just, center hosts yes. fundraisers. Yes. So whether it's like a bake sale or whatever, but. Some schools different. have to do things like at playground equipment and that kind of stuff too. I mean, uh, that, that along those lines, right? Just right. making you making improvements in your school. Yes. Yeah. And, and the students are responsible for the decisions and the rollout yeah. of it. Yeah. Which is really the ideal for youth engagement. It's, it's the ideal youth engagement model is when you the student, it's student led, student yeah. driven, right? Yeah. And then you have your adult mentors who help you along yes. the way. Yes. But it really is based on what you guys want and, what, and how you make it happen. Right. Yes. Great experiences yes. for the future too. Yeah. Yes. You know? And students said it looks great on a resume, doesn't it? 
<laughs> when you're applying for like universities and stuff, that's what I'm going through right now. So <laughs> involvement at that level in your school is yeah. key. Yeah. Okay. So now let's talk about um, across the across the district. Then, so in your school, we know you have projects. You work right. with your student body and your adult mentors. What do you do in the in in the larger scheme of things from school to school across the district? How do you relate? Well, we all get together just to like share ideas and like bounce. So let's say we have like issues that mm -hmm. we share. We could bounce ideas off of and like help each other out. So if somebody in your school identifies a, an issue that they think is a concern, you can go to your other students that are just from across the district and say, mm -hmm. this is something that we're, and have you ever dealt with this? And someone might say, this is how we resolve that yes. problem. <laughs> one of the examples I used was I know that one school in the district wanted to get away with them, um, do away with plastic water bottles. Right. And so they put in those refillable water fountains yep. and that other schools were we like bounced that's a, off that one <laughs> that's a great idea let's do that yes. too so those are the kinds of things so now do you do you address um are you involved with the school board at all like do you meet board members and often stuff? You very do. often yes that's kind of exciting too isn't it yes because you get to find out the inner workings of like how. tonight for the gala they will all be there eating supper with us so if we really yeah. do want to talk to them we can just walk over to their table <laughs> that is very it's cool. awesome yes. yeah okay so now let's talk about this initiative this year that you undertook at Chaplow. you made a decision that you wanted to show other students across the algoma district what it's like to be a student in a rural uh, high school. Yes. So let's spend a, a live the day of a life of a student in Chaplow. Yes. Brilliant. How did you pull this off? So this was our 24 hours in Chaplow event. Um, what happened was we invited 50 plus students to our school. And wait, let's tell the audience, how many students go to your school in Chaplow? Just over 50. <laughs> so in one day you doubled the population yes. of the school. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been wild. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, so you invite them all, and they yes. And then they came from where? So they were from Elliot Lake, Elliot Wawa, Lake. the Sioux, Wawa, everywhere in Algonquin. Blind River, W. C. Yep. showed up. Yeah, they all got on buses and came to Chaplow. Yeah, and they what drove did you down do with the one twenty nine highway? <laughs> what did they think of the highway? They. <laughs> It was definitely a little scary. <laughs> Were they all like, yes, yeah, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was good though. So they got their safe and sound. Yeah. Yeah. And then what kind of activities did you have planned for them? We had a campfire and <gasps> we had an indigenous elder. Elder. And uh, she just did a star talk. She did like. Star talk. Yeah, like so we learned teaching of the chief, like Aboriginal teachings Aboriginal about the stars, teachings. Um, trees. Yeah, she yeah. brought in some tea as yeah. well that she made, and we all got to try it. Aboriginal culture is a big thing up there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh huh. You did some stuff with uh, dream catchers as well. We'll talk about that yep. in a little bit. Uh, let's go from this. Let's look at some pictures sure. that you brought. So here we're looking at a welcome banner you obviously created yourselves. Got yep. some Chaplow-esque images there. What are we looking at? So there's the there's a moose <laughs> there's a helicopter because we do have the MNR there. There's which... a moose, of course there is. And the <laughs> MNR, yeah. Uh, we have a campfire. Oh, hold on. And then look like hiking trail. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now I think we've got a picture of you guys all in the gym, all the student senators. Yes. Uh, and behind you in this picture, we can also see that's the the mural that your art class painted. Yes. In the lounge. Yes. yes. Or what do you call it? The the learning commons. The learning <laughs> commons. <laughs> Who's the young lady on the far right in that? picture. Her name's Amara Rufo. So she's our vice chair um, next year for our Indigenous student leadership group in our school. She you just got elected for that. Indigenous leadership group? Yes. And she drummed at the ceremony. Yes, yeah, she, she did, did a drumming for ceremony. Yes. You? How nice was that? Okay, let's look at our next picture. This was all the students walking over the uh, bridge when we went looks to like a pretty. Walls. It looks like a pretty major bridge. What is this? Why is that bridge there? Uh, so our town is a railroad town. It uh, the railroad tracks go right through the middle of town and we have to split it up. It splits up the town in two. The railroad tracks split your town in two? Yes. So that bridge connects one side of the town to the other? To the other, yeah. Do you come from the wrong side of the tracks or the right side of the tracks? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> um, that's pretty must be quite a sight seeing those 50 students right. coming over the bridge. Yeah. Did the downtown folks go, what's going on? Everyone was yeah. a little bit confused. <laughs> oh, here you all are now. What, you're going yes. grocery shopping? We just got back from the grocery <gasps> store in this picture. You work at the grocery yes, store? Yes, I do. Tell me the story. So, um, <laughs> basically, our the latest our grocery stores open is 8 o'clock. Um, on Mondays to Wednesdays, it's only 6, which was this was a Monday night, so it was only 6 o'clock, and I went to my boss and I said, by the way, between 4 and 5 o'clock, there will be 50 people coming in here to buy groceries. So they called all the cashiers, they opened every cash register, they it shut down Chapel for a little bit. <laughs> I love it! Okay, so the kids got their groceries and yes. then where'd you head off to? Hey, dinner at Stonewall's! Yes. yes. Stonewall's is a great restaurant in Chapel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an yeah. old what? An old church? Or yes, it's at the basement of the Anglican Church in Chapel, which is wow. one of the oldest buildings in Chapel. You all had dinner there, and now this 
some of the games I saw, I saw Jenga going on there. Yes. You created some fun times you did. X's and O's, human X's and O's or something. Yes. Tell me about the Jenga one. So our tech teacher, he built us a giant Jenga. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the kids were just... Yeah, we split them all up into uh, Well, that one groups. guy was, was playing pretty successfully in that picture we just saw. But I... Oh, now... And that young lady didn't have as no. much luck. <laughs> <laughs> Who made the Jenga game? Our tech teacher, Mr. Wetzel. Oh, thanks, Mr. Wetzel. Okay, <laughs> so then you also, you mentioned that you had the bonfire and stuff. I don't know if we've got some pictures of the bonfire or what's next on, the, on our pictures here. What do we got coming up? Oh, no, this is where you did trivia. the Shapo trivia. Yes. Tell that story. So basically when they got there, we just started giving them little facts, but we didn't tell them that we were going to do a Shapo trivia. So uh, we would say little things about Shaplow and you just, if like, they drop listen, yeah, on the wall, on the hiking stuff. Yeah. So if they when they were listening, and then we would ask them questions after, and they'd be like, "Oh, you said that," and they would answer. And, and it was not like a Jeopardy game. Yeah, right? yeah. So like we had town travel, all these different. Did you were you involved in making up questions? Well, yeah, we all were. Yeah, we all were. Yeah, we all all were. That must have been it. fun. Yeah. yeah. Did you learn things you didn't know about Shaplow? Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's very cool. Okay, that's our next picture. Oh, now here's something, some uh, indigenous teaching? Yeah, she is our uh, Métis. Uh, oh, because you've got about three or four, four, different, four, four different, different uh, indigenous, indigenous communities. Indigenous communities represented in Chapel. Yes. So she's the, uh, the uh, Métis? Métis, yeah. So she did our dream catchers with us. She was explaining uh, like the meaning behind the dream the catcher and them. how to make them. And, that and she here you are making them. them. Yeah. Yes. That's us making them. So the cool. Yes. And then they had a final destination. We'll share that a little later. I think right. the next one might be on the trails. Are we on the trails now in this next picture? Are we going hiking? Let's see. On the Mr. Levesque trails? Mm -hmm. Or no? Oh, no, it's the Campfire, bonfire. Yeah. <laughs> so did you, what did you, did you eat? Are you eating? We had s'mores. Well, of course you did, <laughs> s'mores. But, um, and then another picture of the bonfire, I believe we see another, uh, this is, you talked about this indigenous leader, uh, an elder. Yes. She's making her tea? Yeah. yeah. And we all got to try it. It was good. <laughs> what, and the yeah, and she, what, did she do storytelling? Yeah, so she did star teaching, uh, teachings about the forest, different plants, natural medicines, all that. Really she also cool. drummed for us there too, along well. with Amara. Yeah. Okay, and then now, let's see, I think we're coming. Oh, now, this, is, this was the hike. <laughs> yes. What a beautiful spot. What's That's that? That's our Chaplow River. The Chaplow River. Yes. And this is everybody who came to visit? Yes. Yep. Look at that, and that's the size of that, and that's the population of your school. Yes. <laughs> what was it like for the students in your school to suddenly have fifty strangers coming in and walking bit, the halls? They're a little bit like worried What's about it. <laughs> What's going on? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But ultimately, by the end of the day, I'm sure you all just it, like. Yeah. You said one of the things that the students from Sault Ste. Marie and the bigger schools were like, you know, everybody's names. Yeah. Yeah. When we were walking down the streets, I'd be like, oh, who's that? And I would say their name, and they would be like, oh, wait, you actually know them? I was like, yeah, we pretty <laughs> much know everyone here. And there we are on the trail. Beautiful yes. hiking trails, huh? Yeah. But hardly room for all of you. <laughs> and then, what's next? Let's next see the next picture. I think maybe we're going to be heading off to the end of the journey now. Uh, oh, no, we're still on the trail. Oh, who's this lady? So she's our MNR specialist. Uh, she talked to us about uh, certain trees that are native to our area, different plants, and she explained to us like everything that was. I saw the WC Eka kids there in the yes. yellow. So did, did a lot of teams show up in their spirit wear? Yes, yeah, so we asked that in our packing yeah, list to do yeah. school spirit wear. Oh, and here now, what? oh, what's going on here? That's the Michael Levesque hiking trail. Oh, of course yes, it is. It says it yeah. right there. <laughs> okay, Mr. Levesque, keep those trails clean for us. <laughs> And then, uh, when you do, you also have like a bear wise session. Yes. <laughs> because bears are a big thing in Sheffield. Yes. yes. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> you hate bears. She's bears? Oh, yes. You're teaching them about bears now. Yes. Yeah. What's the story about your? Tell the story about your principal. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> she went to camp and she came back and a bear had ripped a hole in her house. <laughs> it took off her dryer vent. Yeah. And, and ate away ate until away the until hole was big enough. <laughs> and then it got into her house, slept in her beds, just like the three bears. <laughs> slept in her beds, and then also ate, ate her ice, ice cream. cream. It got in her freezer and ate her ice cream and her frozen fish. The bear did. Yeah. So you were giving bear wise lessons. Yes. <laughs> You also talked about substance use and misuse, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you talked about um, on the dangers of being online. Social media. Social yeah. media. Uh, we had we our OPP and our uh, school counselor come in for that. Excellent, excellent. See, that's really cool because uh, there's been some curriculum changes and stuff, so yes. it's really great that you guys are staying on top yes. of that and, mm -hmm. and as peers, yep. talking to each other yep. about those yep. the dangers yep. for young people in our society, yep. right? Uh, so then you took the dream catchers and then you went to this location. Now tell me about where we are right now. So in Chapel, we had a residential school, and uh, they 
have a cemetery for these children that were at the residential school. Uh, the canoe that you see there is an, an elder came into our school and made this canoe with us. We all got to participate in it. You were just about grade 10 when that was made? I was in grade 8. Grade 8? Yeah, so it was a while made. ago. The photo we're going to see is the final, the final resting place for the dream catchers yeah, yes. that you created and you hung them in the graveyard? Yeah, in the tree. So we asked the kids to grab their dream catchers that they got. Yes. And uh, yeah, so they hung them up wherever they felt it needed right. to be. And also with tobacco, is that right? A tobacco tie, yeah. Wow. This sounds like it was an amazing event. What was the response like from the students across the it district? It was very emotional. A lot of people were crying. Um, it was something that was very emotional, but it's also a very beautiful way to say goodbye yeah. to these people. Amara Rufo, again, she drummed at this mm -hmm. and sang a Safe Travels song for us. Wow. So it was, I guess, it was a perfect way to say goodbye to Guys, our group. Guys, I'm so impressed. And I, <laughs> you know, it never, it, the Algoma District School Board, all the, both school boards in our district in Algoma work so hard to make learning experiential. Yeah. And the stuff, what you took away, what you gave to the other students who came to you and what you took away from that, that kind of stuff you really can't teach in a classroom. Yeah. Right? No, it was amazing. <laughs> will you, will you, do you think it be something else Will other schools want to do this now? So at our last our last online meeting that we had with everyone, we have gala events at the end of every year, and we brought up the idea that we, maybe we should have a gala at every school <gasps> instead of every, always coming to the zoo. Maybe Soon. each school mm -hmm. should host a gala. So we'll see what they do with that, we'll idea. See what they do with that <laughs> idea. And the gala is tonight? Yes. Have a great Thank time. You. <laughs> hey, I know it was a long trip in from Chaplo. I appreciate you taking this time out to stop by the studio for Thank this interview. Thank you for having us. A real pleasure. Come back again. <laughs> in the we'll hang out again. <laughs> this is the future, ladies and gentlemen. We're in good hands. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back with more mornings with Luann and Tim right after this. I love women. I love older women. Professional women. Stay-at-home moms. I love how women put the family first. I love how you're so concerned that I'll get to your husband. You have no idea that I'm coming after you. Make. Death. Wait. Please donate to fund life-giving research. Because heart disease and stroke is the number one killer of women. What do you wish for? A nice life? Nice things? Or do you wish for something more? A sense of purpose? Do you wish to discover a cure? To write code that cracks an unsolvable question? To further our exploration into space? Or to invent something that changes everything right here on Earth? Well. If that's your wish, make yourself ready. Because when you look back, you'll see that you didn't just make wishes, you realize them. It's Fur and Feathers Friday, and we've got some furry friends. N not Laura. 
<laughs> Laura Wax. I did. Um, <laughs> Alex, oh. welcome to Fur and Feathers Friday. Thank you. Luann Bring never, me back every week. Luann <laughs> never joins me for Fur and Feathers Friday because she's not big on animals. <laughs> Um, other than Jim, so th <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't bring a cat today. Yes, oh my goodness. Oh, you're allergic to cats. Yes. I don't know. Oh, if I'm allergic to rabbits yet? You didn't even know that Alex was I here today. Didn't. I forgot to tell you that. Oh, we're coming back. Anyway, we're welcome back. to Fur and Feathers Friday. Laura is here from the Humane Society, as always, and today you have brought us baby bunnies. Baby bunnies, not yes. just bunnies. Look at your little, <laughs> look at your little bunny legs. These little guys are about six weeks old. They're so little. Yeah. Are they gonna? How big will they get, Laura? Uh. They're going to stay pretty small, probably um, like a small cat size. Both mom and dad we have at the shelter and are both just small on the small side. Mom's like a lion head dwarf and, and What's dad's a lion head dwarf? Fluffy. Oh, which would explain yeah, why the fluff. this rabbit has little tufts all over it. Yeah, like, but dad's got the short fur. So is, is this going to stay like this? It's, it <laughs> might. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. Yeah. You look kind of like... I don't know. You got a rash or something? Yeah, no. like it's over a little collar. Oh, look! It's like you got a fur collar. Yeah. Um, what about yours? What's that one? A cute one. <laughs> Alex, this isn't about you. Could you make the bunny face the camera, please? <laughs> that, that was the only gray one of the bunch. Oh, look at that! <laughs> he actually obeyed. The now, we can't call it he because no. tell me. Uh, we don't know their gender as of yet. Um, bunnies cannot be sexed until they're between six and eight weeks old, which no is kidding. why they're currently not for adoption. I'm sorry, um, I don't want to They're we, currently not up for adoption. It'll be another couple of weeks. Uh, we're hoping that we'll, probably by the beginning of next week we'll be able to have a solid idea of what they are gender-wise. A gender reveal party. Yes, we yeah, are. A gender reveal party. So up until then, we're going to use gender, gender neutral pronouns. We're going to call them they and them. Buddies. They and them. Hi. Hi, Bunny. Or just call it Bunny. bunny. They don't have names yet. No, we don't name them. I like, the, I like Alex's has the little white on the paws. <laughs> That's really cute. What are they? How many are there in the... Do you call it a litter of bunnies? No. I think There's so, a, yeah. Is it? How many did the mummy have? She had, uh, she had four. So there are four. Now, what about the mother? Is she going to be up for adoption yes. later? Yes, and she's beautiful. She's almost like calico colored, like the tricolor. No. And she's really furry. She, and she, sweet personality. Sweet personality of the mommy? Absolutely. Just let you sit there and pet her. So she has to, does she still feed them? Do they um, still like take a, do they take a teat? They do. I At this point, they're pretty well weaned. Baby bunnies can be eating like solid food within a couple of weeks. Oh, you guys are champs. Yeah. Uh, guinea pigs, it's instantly. Like really? When they come out, they can eat like the hard little guinea pig pellets and everything. Are they born with teeth? Yeah. Guinea pigs are born these with guys teeth. are too. It's just these little tiny, cute little teeth, and oh. fur. They're full of fur. They're really? cute. Really. Um, but they do rely on mom a little bit more than like the, their guinea pig. So friends. mom will be up for adoption soon, it's and soon these will be up for adoptions. What about dad? Dad is currently up for adoption. <laughs> What's the story on dad? Dad is probably best with somebody who doesn't want a snuggly bunny. <laughs> he's, he's a little bit dominant. Uh, some male rabbits do get that way. Yeah. Uh, he's space possessive. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So he needs to live alone. But yes, yes. Yeah. I, I know how he feels. I don't think he'd be good with any other rabbits or small children. He would not be. No, he wouldn't be a good child's pet. So good for somebody dominant. who's like a, a... He's gorgeous. So a rabbit that? aficionado. He? He's black with some really distinct white markings. A rabbit aficionado would enjoy daddy. Yes. <laughs> um, where did the bunnies come from originally? Uh, they were surrendered by their owner. Okay. Uh, pardon me, I'm going to cough a little bit. <clears throat> I just wanted to know about a special... Um, okay, like when we adopt a dog, we have to have it neutered or spayed or, and cat. What about with bunnies? Is there a rule about having them done, or can you just take it and not worry about getting it fixed? You don't have to if they're going to be housed alone. Uh, it is recommended by some vets uh, because it can prevent cancers. Oh, really? Yes, and that's with cats and dogs as well. It can prevent like mammary chain cancers in females. Did you know that if, they get, if you get your animal fixed, it'll reduce the risk of cancer? I had no idea what we were talking about. I was playing with the bunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> Cats, dogs, rabbits that aren't fixed are at a higher risk of cancers. There's something I learned today I did not know. And if you want more than one bunny, it's a good idea to get them fixed because then it reduces competition right. and fighting oh. and that litters. And how much do bunnies go for at the Humane Society? Our bunnies are $20. $20 and they're healthy as can be. Absolutely. 
So there's four <laughs> babies up for adoption, plus a mummy soon and a daddy if you're a rabbit aficionado. <laughs> yes, daddy's daddy's special. Oh, 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 oh cleaning he's cleaning Noah. himself. Oh my gosh, he's the cutest bunny. Oh, look at Alex. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a true professional <gasps> journalist. Okay, listen, get a hold of Laura. At the, how was your Canada Day? Did it you was have great. a good weekend? Yeah, it was yeah. fantastic. Nice to see you again. You too. As always, enjoy your weekend, Laura. You and Laura. Uh, and enjoy your weekend too, folks. Alex, you're back on Monday. I will be here on Monday. We wish the best to Luann. Hope she's having a great time with her family. And uh, thanks for joining us today on Mornings with Luann and Tim. We'll see you Monday. Have a fabulous weekend. Bye for now.